Welcome to Old Classic Car, and in this compilation we are looking at practical classics. No, not the magazine, but classic cars that lend themselves to regular use, daily drivers, and so on, for various reasons. And, to begin with, a lineup of classic Morris Miners. There are always going to be one or two Morris Miners featuring in any compilation relating to practical classics, and cars don't get much more practical than these. Roomy, economical, and excellent spares support, body-wise and mechanically which you can't say for every classic car out there. Next up, the Volvo Amazon. Now this is a car I've owned a few examples of over the years since the early 1990s. Very sturdy, tough cars. You can get the estates and you can get the saloons in either two or four door guys. So in either form, they make for a very practical classic. Also with overdrive available as well. And that applies also to this, the MGB GT here in rubber bumper form. Again, a really practical choice for anyone looking perhaps to run a classic car on a daily basis. You can buy pretty much anything for these cars, including newly remade body shells. So even the worst examples could, in theory, be saved. And here we have a slice of Italia, the little Fiat 500. Two examples of the Fiat 500 here from the probably late 1960s or early 1970s, these particular cars. Not huge but pretty well supported and very, very economical, I would have thought, with a very small engine mounted in the back. And this, of course, was going to be the replacement for the good old Mini, but that didn't actually happen. This is the Mini Metro, as it was called originally. Again, a very, very practical car, and look how easy that would be to drive. Nice and nimble, light to drive, great windows, and you can see all the way around. Just look at the visibility available from the driver's seat. And talking of Minis, here we have a 1966 Wolseley Hornets, the uprated, slightly longer version of the Mini with a little bit more boot space and much plusher trim as well. So if you fancy a Mini but a few more creature comforts, perhaps this would be the choice for you. Very economical as well too. And there are one or two pre-war cars that also lend themselves to being practical ownership propositions. And here we have the Austin 7 Ruby, one of the few pre-war cars that is actually really well supported spares-wise and knowledge-wise out there in the World Wide Web. This is a great little car that used to appear at many local events. And if you've got quite a large family or you insist on taking large picnic hampers to your classic car shows, maybe one of these Volvo 700 series limousines would fit the bill. What a practical car that is. And this was actually a Volvo offering, a catalogue offering available through your local Volvo dealer. Back to the 1950s now and we have the little Ford 100e. This is a two-door car, there was also the four-door prefect, which arguably will be a little bit more practical, but if you've only got two or three people to carry around and a small picnic hamper, maybe one of these would fit the bill. Or the later 107E with the overhead valve engine, perhaps. And here's a bit of a rarity, we spotted this one at the Landedno Transport Festival many years ago. This is a Reliant Rebel, a fiberglass-bodied car introduced by Reliant in 1964. The saloon van and estate car versions were available, so how practical is that? And again, great visibility out as well. I do have a soft spot for classic estates, and uh, this beauty is a standard Vanguard Phase 3, or the Vignali version of the Phase 3 in estate car form. What a cracking looking car that is, and so, so practical with all that space in the back. What a great car that is. Of course, there are always going to be several Fords in here. And while body parts and trim parts might not be the easiest things to find for these, the Ford Cortina Mark III would make for a very usable 1970s classic, I would have thought. If you've owned one of these, let me know in the comments what they're like. Are they as practical as I think they are to own? Oh, now here we go, back to classic estate cars and a rare example of the Austin Cambridge Countryman. This one from 1967, and again, roomy, fantastic visibility, great spares support, and most of the body panels are still available for these if you look long enough. Nice, simple little car here, 243 TWC, the Vauxhall Viva HA. You don't see too many of these, and parts for old Vauxhalls aren't always easy to find, certainly body and trim parts, so you won't want to buy one missing any of these bits, but at least the oily bits, the engine parts, I think can probably be sourced fairly easy for these cars. And much of what I said about the Vauxhall there applies to Roots Group. This is a Hillman Super Minx. This particular car dates to 1964. It has the early curvier roof line and windows. The later cars were squared off somewhat, which gave a little bit extra visibility, slightly more modern lines, but perhaps lost a little bit of the character. 
couple of bonds now in the foreground the bond you keep which is triumph herald or vitesse based depending on which model you go for but fiberglass body and triumph running gear the big lift up front as well that makes for a very practical choice perhaps less so the bond mini car in the background And talking of Triumphs and Herald running gear, here we have the Triumph Herald itself. This is a fairly early example with the letters Herald across the front of the bonnet. Later Heralds would have Triumph across there. But yeah, these are really practical. Huge lift up front. You can sit on the front wheel and set your ignition timing and change the plugs and so on. Now, 3 Series BMW. If you have to do a few motorway miles, you could do a lot worse. And then buy one of these, one of these 1980s classics. BMW still fairly home maintainable. All the parts are around as far as I can tell. Perhaps a few trim bits are difficult to track down now. But yeah, that's a reasonably practical modern classic. And how about one of these if you need to tow something heavy? Or perhaps lug a caravan around to your steam rallies as the owner of this particular Range Rover does. Maybe one of these would be a good choice. The early ones all had the 3.5 litre V8 and diesels would come along a little bit later in production but what a great car that is and if you like a bit of open top motoring and fairly simple mechanics you could do a lot worse than one of these early 1980s Ford Escort Mark III Cabriolets very very nice little car carrying on with these practical classics well the Renault's rival if you like to the Citroen 2 CV this is the Renault 4 this is a fairly late 1980s example, although they do date way back to the 1960s. This was at one of the crew heritage meets a couple of years back. Nice, nice car, four doors, and of course you can get the van versions as well. But a slice of Britain now, 1950s style, the Morris Oxford. This is the Series 2 Oxford, uh, built from 1954 to 1956 only. There's a 1489cc BMC B-Series engine under that bonnet. So that's nice and easy to look after body parts you might struggle getting some bits now and that probably applies to this as well this is our old standard companion the estate car version of the standard 10 a four doors compact estate very very practical as you can see easily capable of taking all the family's clobber on a day out at a classic car show And rival perhaps to the Ford Cortina, this was Roots Group's answer, the Hillman Minx, the Arrow series, Hillman Minx, this one from the late 1960s. But yeah, nice simple, nice simple design there, three box styling saloon, good visibility all the way around, so there's a lot to be said for a car like that. And much the same applies to this, although this is a lot newer, this is on an H plate, about 1990, the Rover 400 series saloon, the four door saloon version of the 200 series hatchback again quite a rare car now and uh, trim parts might be tricky to find but running gear i think you'll still be all right for a little while yet now how about this how cool is this from the early 1970s a magnificent simca estate as i've said before old estate cars are some of the most practical classic cars of all and how nice is that that looks wonderful in that metallic paint job and that fantastic roof rack as well for all your bags now, not so much the Cresta perhaps as a practical classic, although perhaps they are, but I was thinking more of the Series 2 Land Rover part there. Now that is a Series 2 I believe, and very very nice indeed too. You can buy pretty much everything for these, including galvanised chassis, and yes the chassis do rot. And uh, another home DIY car, which is easily looked afterable, is this. It's a Cox GTM from the early 1970s, a kit car based on mini running gear, albeit the engine is in the back rather than the front and it's only a two-seater. But as cars go, it'd probably be fairly easy to look after one of those and loads of parts around for those. But if you want something a little bit newer, how about maybe the Vauxhall Astra GTE, the Mark II Vauxhall Astra. One of those would be quite a good car to run, but as I've said before about Vauxhalls, just make sure you buy one with all the bits because it might be quite tricky tracking down some of those trim parts now if any are missing. Now, to the early 1950s, late 40s, early 1950s, we've got the L series Vauxhall here. This is a Vauxhall Wyvern from October 1950, so similar age to our V8 Pilot, but much more modern looking. This had the 1422cc four-cylinder engine, and of course there was a six-cylinder Velox as well. Now, here, here we are with BMC's offering, rival to the Standard 8, of course. This is the Austin AE35 Saloon. 
of the 1950s. Good to see it on its original registration. Nice easy car to look after, loads of parts around, tuning parts available as well for the A-Series engine. So that would be a really good choice. Of a classic estate here, and of course it is a Saab, the Saab 95 here in the V4 format. They did also do the two-stroke before this model. Um, but if you want a practical car, you'd probably go for the V4. It's a Ford of Germany engine, it's parts still available for those, and what a great load lugger that is. But if you really want a saloon, how about a Triumph of the early 1970s? We've got the Triumph 1500 in the foreground here, which was a forerunner to the Dolomite, of course, very similar looking car. And there is a Toledo parked alongside, so both cars, four-door saloons, and eminently practical. Another Dagenham favourite here, the Mark II Ford Cortina. This is the posh one, the 1600E, but there were several versions available, either two or four-door saloons, and again with that lovely boxy styling of the 1960s, 70s era. Uh, great cars, easy to park, easy to see out of, and yeah, just a nice car all round. Now representing the Allegro, British Leyland's Allegro of the 1970s, we have this immaculate Van den Plas version, the Van den Plas 1500. And yeah, nice car, quite practical, although you do have the hydro gas suspension to think about. So if it starts sagging, you will have to find someone to pump that up for you. Uh, there was always going to be a standard in here, wasn't there? And here we've got a lovely, lovely little standard 10 of the 1950s, complete with period sun visor, but four doors. All the standard 8s and 10s were four doors at this time. The 948cc engine, which went on into the later Herald as well. So parts are available for them. And uh, here yeah, the Trabant, uh, 1980s example here, but it dates to much earlier times. Little two-stroke powered car, very strange little cars in many ways. So some sort of fiberglassy, cardboardy type body construction, but there is a steel chassis to rot away underneath, so always have a good prod around underneath. Back to Ford Cortinas, we've just had a Mark II, and this is the Mark V Cortina 1.6 GL on the next plate so what dates that that's about 1981 or early 1982 but a very practical choice that the saloon or indeed the estates which i think we'll see an example of later and here we have the humber scepter from 1965 if the hillman super minx is kind of up your street but you just want a little bit more pizzazz and then maybe the humber scepter or the singer vogue even is the car for you very shapely roof line i do like the shape of these lovely curved back window as well of course, if you're talking practical classics, you're never going to be far away from thinking about a small commercial vehicle. This is the A40 pickup of the early 1950s, based very much on the Austin Devon, the A40 Devon. And yeah, what a Bobby Dazzler that is. This one used to be a regular at quite a few of the shows we went to, but not so much lately. Back to Triumph Heralds, we saw the earlier cars before, and this, with the slightly revised front end, is the Herald 1360 with a 1296cc engine. Again, really well supported, spares-wise, great view out of the car, and they were very popular with driving schools for that very reason. If you need something a little bit newer though, then perhaps the VW Golf in Mark I form is the car for you. Hatchback, of course. Very, very practical handy car. You could run one of these on a daily basis with no sweat broken, I wouldn't have thought. Nice, nice car. This is a lovely red GTI example on the Audlum Festival of Transport a few years ago. And a Mark II Ford Escort next, a 1.3L that isn't a rally car. How nice is that to see? That's quite a late example on the V-plate, so about 1979. This was at an evening classic car meet. But yeah, what a practical choice that is if you like your motoring 1970s style. Okay, a pre-war design here. These were built either side of the Second World War, the little Morris 8 Series E. You could get two-door or four-door saloons. Very well supported, unusually, for a car of that age. The Morris 8 Register do a very good spare part scheme, and uh, they will help you keep one of these on the road, but just look out for rot. And here we go. Now we have the Rover P6. This is a late 67 or 1968 example, TC. On the bonnet there tells us this is a twin carburetted car, but that would make for a very practical classic, a great daily driver, I would have thought. And to 1949, if you like slightly older, curvier cars, this is my old Austin A40 Devon. I had this one for many, many years with a pre B series engine, 1200cc, and a very similar styling to that pickup we were looking at just a moment ago. I wonder where this is now. 
based on the Hilda Minx, of course, but this is the upmarket Singer Gazelle. Um, very much Minx based under the skin, so engine parts shouldn't be too hard to find, but trim bits, probably not so easy now. So if you're going to buy one, make sure all the important bits are there. Uh, the good old Volvo 240 Estate. Saloons or estates were available based on the older 140s, of course. Very rugged, beloved of antique dealers the world over. Um, but they are getting on a little bit now, so do check for rust, but usually you know, they're not terminally rusty, these cars. And how about one of these? The Triumph Acclaim from 1981 to 1984, based on the Honda Ballade or Ballade. Um, not a bad little car, but is it really a Triumph front wheel drive? Take the Triumph badge off, treat it just as a car in its own right, and there's probably a lot going for it. Oh, the Hillman Husky. This is a little Bobby Dazzler, if ever there was one. Very similar body shape to the Comma Cobb van, but this is the estate with windows in it. And again, very, very practical. It has a one piece rear boot, uh, door as well, just to make access really, really good. But yeah, that's really nice. I like that based on the Minx. And we have here the Austin A60 Cambridge Saloon. We've already seen the uber practical Countryman Estate. And this is a saloon that it was based on. But again, a very practical choice and loads of parts, running gear parts available for these. Body parts, probably not too bad. Second-hand parts, but you'll struggle to find any new body parts now, I would have thought. And here, A180 FBY, the good old Citroen 2CV. Very economical little car. Small engine, only 650cc or thereabouts. And this one, I believe, was restored on the Car SOS TV series just a few years ago. What a cracking little car that is. Nice one now, the Saab 900 Turbo, the three-door hatchback version of the Saab 900, which of course was a, an evolution of the 1970s Saab 99 Combi Coupe. A super practical car, I used to run one just like this many years ago, and it was such a great car, super comfortable and a great heater. And not much in the way of heating in this little gem, this is the Austin Healey Sprite Mark I, the Frog Eye Sprite. If you only need a little two-seater, then you could do a lot worse than one of these. 948cc engine was the original fitment, very similar to that of the A35 and the A40 Mark I, albeit with twin carburettors. But if you need something a little newer, maybe for motorway miles, you could do a lot worse than track down one of the 123 series Mercedes. This is the W123 Saloon, there are various engines available, different capacities, petrol or diesel, and of course a magnificent estate as well. Continuing this look at very practical classics, we have the Ford Fiesta here in Mark II format from 1985. There's a very familiar MGB in the background there, but those little Fiestas are getting hard to find now. Most of them have rotted away and been scrapped, but if you find one that isn't rotten, that would be a great little run around. And here is the rival, I suppose, to the Ford Fiesta. This is the Vauxhall Nova. This is one of the sportier variants, but there are various cheaper versions available. Uh, including the booted Saloon Nova. So if you want something a little bit different to Dagenham's finest, you could do a lot worse than track down a Vauxhall Nova. Another classic Mini here. This is an H-plater, so probably about, what, 1980s, sometime around about there, about 1989 or 90. A John Cooper edition version of the Mini. This was at a Boxing Day meet many, many years ago, hence the snow on the ground. But what a great little car that is. Now we've already seen a couple of examples of Triumph Herald and this is the six cylinder Vitesse version for anyone that still wants the practicality of a Herald but with a little bit more oomph from that two litre straight six engine you can just see there. Nice, nice car. This is a fairly late example with a Rotoflex rear suspension. The earlier cars were a little bit tail happy. Now we're over to Alton Park and the Mark III Ford Escort Gear, a five door hatchback version of the Mark III Escort. We had one identical to this many years ago as a second car and it was a comfy, roomy, perfectly good little car. Back to a sporty little number here and we have a round arch MG Midget. This is on an L plate and uh, the round arch cars weren't produced for all that long. Most of them have the squared off arches but as with the MGBs really well supported. Quite an economical fun little car and you can just pick the phone up and buy pretty much anything for them. Now, if you need a bit more carrying capacity though, how about one of these? This is the Citroen Acadian, the van version of the Citroen Diane. 
and yeah what a great little vehicle that is they are prone to a bit of tin worm the metal is very thin on these i have a good prod around underneath because they can rot pretty spectacularly next up the triumph 2000 mark ii and just like with the vitesse a beautiful six cylinder soundtrack available with these fantastic cars either 2000 or 2.5 litre engines were fitted to these as standard all on carburetors apart from the pi which had a lucas fuel injection Another example now from 1965 of the Hilma Minx. This is one of the later Minxes with the slightly squared off roof line, the Audax series Hilma Minx. Nice car, very practical, nice, easy to work on, quite a large bonnet there, so accessibility is pretty good on these. And we've seen Heralds and Vitesses, and here is the Spitfire, of course, which was based on the Triumph Herald chassis, this is a fairly late Spitfire 1500 on an R registration, so mid-1970s or thereabouts. Lovely little cars, two-seaters of course, nice and easy to work on, parts are all available and quite cheap to buy. And look at this, we had one of these many, many years ago, a PV544 Volvo. This has got the 1800cc B18 engine and it's left-hand drive, as they all were, because these were never officially sold here in the UK, but despite that, parts availability is really good for these cars. So if you want something a bit interesting, maybe go for one of them. And look at this, we all know what this is, a VW Beetle. Again, great spares support for these particular cars. I'm not sure they're super economical, but what a great car to bumble around in. Very, very nice. Continuing this look at practical classics, we have the Austin AE40 Farina here in Mark II, guys, 1965. These started out with a 948cc engine of the Mark I, but were soon upgraded to the 1098 of the Morris 1000 of the day. Very practical car, especially if you get the Countryman with a split rear tailgate, so you can get great accessibility into that boxy interior. And now we are in North Wales, admiring a matching pair of Vauxhall Chevette hatchbacks, three-door hatchbacks um, you could also get the estate version as well and the van the chevan but most cars you'll find i think are probably these hatchbacks and there was also a little saloon version as well and we saw the cortina a little bit earlier the mark 5 cortina saloon and here we have the capacious estate version very very practical car and as i've said so many times what's not to like about a classic estate We've seen minis, and here we have the lovely little mini Woody Estate. This is a Morris badged version. Of course, you could get the Austins as well. This is a Mark I from late 1967, I believe. Unlike the Morris Minor Traveller, that wood isn't structural. It's purely there for decorative purposes, but a very practical little car. And back to Volvos, a K-plate, a car very similar to one that Dad had when I was growing up back in the olden days in the 1970s, the Volvo 144 Saloon. Very, very nice car indeed. Practical, comfy, roomy, great heater, a great daily driver that would make. If you like your Roots Group cars, but maybe suffer from claustrophobia, then an open top Super Minx may be the car for you. A four seater, which makes it quite unusual. You don't get too many classic cars that can carry four people in mod you know, reasonable comfort. So you could do a lot worse than one of these if you can find a good one. Another little pre-war gem here, ably supported by various specialists, so a viable car to run every day if you're not driving too far. This is the Austin 10 Cambridge, about 1937 or 1938, so a slightly bigger car compared to the Ruby, a bit more room in it and a four-door as well, so there's a lot to be said for one of these little Austins. But if you like things a little bit newer, a bit more contemporary, and you do quite a mileage still, maybe one of these E36 era BMW 3 Series will be the car for you. This is a two-door coupe, but you could get the four-door saloons as well, which are probably a little bit more practical. But yeah, nice cars. Back to BMC and the Riley 1.5, the sporty, peppy version, if you like, of the Wolseley 1500. Uh, BMC B Series 1500cc twin carburetor engine. Nice, nice car. The MG Midget, we had a round arch early 70s midget before, and this is a late 70s rubber bumper midget, by which time it had the Triumph 1500 engine under the bonnet. But as with all these cars, really, really well supported. The MG Midgets and the MGBs, really well supported parts wise, you can buy pretty much anything. Which probably isn't the case for these, but these are great old things 
the four-door Ford console Mark II HSV743 this particular example again running gear part shouldn't be too much of a problem but you'd want to make sure that all the trim and body bits are there in reasonable condition because you might struggle to replace those now a little classic modern classic Peugeot if you like on a J plate a lovely very sharp looking example of the five-door Peugeot 205 Or maybe also from France, how about one of these, the Renault Twingo. This is a German registered example of the Twingo, and like all of them, left-hand drive. These were never officially sold here in the UK, so the only ones you'll see here are cars that people have imported themselves. But there's millions of them, well, kind of, still in France, so parts are still available, but you probably have to go shipping, uh, shopping rather, across the channel. Okay, Hilmer Minx now, 46 HTJ is its original registration. This one was put on the road in April 59. And again, quite handy being a four-door saloon, not too big. You can see out of it reasonably well, and that would make a lovely little run around, that would. I like that a lot. And staying with Roots Group, we have the slightly larger Humber Hawk. Magnificent machine here in the two-tone paint job. Very, very original-looking car, this. And again, with its comfy leather seat and lovely wooden dashboard as well, this would, this would cruise around very happily, I'm sure, as a regular driver. Very, very practical. This is a bit of a left field choice. I'm not quite sure how practical these are. Maybe let me know in the comments if you're a fan or have experience of the DAF 44. That's a Michelotti design car with a two cylinder 844cc engine hung out the front there. So it's a bit of a left field choice with its CVT transmission. But are they any good? Okay, classic Fords are usually a safe bet if you're looking for a practical classic. In the foreground there, we've got a Ford Pop 103E. You're not going to be setting any speed records, but they are pretty simple cars to run. All very basic, and but yeah, not the fastest car by any means. But staying with Ford, and significantly nippier, is this Ford Escort Mark I. Now, you'll struggle to prime one of these, but if you do, you'll have a lot of fun with it. This is a standard pennant, the last gasp of the original standard 10. Different front wings, different rear wings, but very similar under the skin. The same 948cc engine that went on to serve in the Herald for years afterwards. So again, mechanically, not too bad to run, but you would never find any body parts. And representing the ADO 16, we have this lovely Vandenplast 1300. This was Dad's run around for several years. It's a lovely low mileage car, this was. Again, super practical, four doors, lovely walnut dashboard as well. Little picnic tables, so a bit of luxury as well. Great little car that was. And how about one of these, the Triumph Dolomites? Various versions were available over the years, um, from 1300cc upwards, of course. This is the 16-valve Dolomite Sprint. The car plagued with some reliability issues back in the day, same as the Stag. But by now, they're all pretty much sorted, I would have thought, and I could quite easily see myself in one of those. And, or maybe one of these, the Fiat Panda. Most of these were front-wheel drive, but you could also get the four-wheel drive version, a Panda 4x4, which would be handy if you live in sort of uh, rugged areas, perhaps, that suffer in the winter with snowy, icy roads, that kind of thing. But yeah, nice, interesting choice. And we're back to the Hillman Super Minx. We've had saloons, we've had convertibles, but of course, Top of the tree in terms of practicality is the Hillman Super Minx Estate, this one from 1966, complete with tow bar, so it could even tow a little caravan as well. How about one of these, a D-plate Larder Neva, the four-wheel drive Larder Neva, and this one even has headlamp wipers. Good heavens, oh, that would impress your comrades if you ended up buying one of these. Most of them, I think, have been shipped back to Russia by now, but there are still one or two here in the UK, which you may just find for sale. Who remembers these? I mean, these were everywhere at one time. Family cars, sales reps cars, the Ford Sierra. This one on a Y plate, and then in beige, and still with the original wheel trims on, which must be quite a rare thing to find now. So quite a practical choice. And how about one of these? Now, again, as I've said before with Vauxhalls, finding parts isn't always easy, body and trim-wise anyway. So again, buy the best you can afford. But yeah, that would be a great car, wouldn't it? Four doors, so nice and easy to clamber in and out of. Very practical for the family classic car owner. 
and hear about what about one of these the the maestro originally the austin maestro the rover group maestro not everyone's first choice perhaps but actually if you look at the design five doors really airy cabin great to see out of lovely deep rear window now compare that to a modern five door hatchback and you'll see just how far things have changed the triumph spitfire here this is a mark three triumph spitfire with a 1296 engine and the twin carburetors very similar underneath to the herald although these have structural sills on them whereas the herald has chassis outriggers under the floors Now we've seen quite a few classic Fords already, but how about one of these, the Corsair? This is a four-door saloon version of the Ford Corsair, and of course you could get the really roomy estate if you want maximum practicality, so maybe one of those would be worth looking out for. Talking of classic estates, this wonderful Lada has popped up at a couple of car shows recently. I had an interview with the owner of this particular car, at one of the crew heritage centre meets a little while ago but yeah i mean it's short on luxuries but high on practicality i would have thought these boxy roomy estate versions how about one of these in fact the saloon is probably more practical than the estates the estate versions of the Vauxhall viva hc have a very sloping rear tailgate which does compromise the interior load space a little bit so i think if i was going for a viva i'd probably get a four-door saloon just like this one We've seen Minis, but let's not forget there was also the Mini Clubman. This is a sporty 1275 GT version. The Clubman version, the squared off at the front there, it did give a bit more engine accessibility under the bonnet, wider bonnets, a bit easier to get things. So, uh, yeah, perhaps a slightly more practical choice if you're thinking of buying a Mini. And we've seen the Riley 1.5 already, and this is the single carb Wolseley equivalent, the Wolseley 1500. Dad ran one of these before getting the VDP. And it was a lovely thing to drive. Very similar under the skin to the Morris Minor, in fact. Um, rack and pinion steering and so on. So these are a great steer. Now, Morris Minor's dad had one of these as well. You might remember seeing that one in some of the earlier videos. This is the Morris Minor Traveller, a super practical car. And unlike the Mini that we saw before, that woodwork is structural. So if you've got terminal woodworm in there, you're going to be faced with replacing a lot of wood. So have a good prod. Okay. Back to Saab's, we've seen the 900, and here is the original 99 Combi Coupe, a three-door hatchback version of the Saab 99, and what a practical bit of kit that is. Comfy, great heat, a super comfy seat, well laid out dashboard, there's a lot to be said for running one of those on a daily basis. Now how about one of these, a 1965 Triumph 2000, this is a Mark 1 Triumph 2000, now, there were so many cars of this era lovely spacious airy cabins just look at the visibility around there easy to park easy to reverse a very very practical choice and here we have a four-door ford cortina of course you could get the saloons two-door four-door saloons and the estate and here is one of the regular saloons showing off its surprisingly large boot area that makes it quite a practical choice this is a 1966 ford cortina at the kelsall steam rally as you may know, longer, longer term followers of the channel will know we're quite a fan of MX-5s. And this is the Mark II version of the MX-5. This one appears to date to 2003. They are a little bit prone to tin worms, so check the sills and the back ends of the arches very, very carefully indeed. And here is the MG's rival, if you like, to the Mazda MX-5. It's the MGF, later TF. These are quite an interesting little cars quite collectible now mid-engine not the easiest engine to get at mind you but if you don't mind that these are quite a good choice by all accounts and lots of parts available for them and if you need a bit of space well how about one of these the original land crab as they were nicknamed the austin and the morris 1800 this example dates to 1967 very very roomy airy interior wheels at all four corners of the body shell it's a gonis designed just like the mini and the 1100 and another Volvo here, we had the 240 series estate before, and this is the car that fathered it. This is the 145S, the twin carburetor version of the 144 estate. This one's been upgraded with GLT alloy wheels from a much later car, but that's a super practical vehicle. And how about one of these? You don't see these too often now, but a nice cheap economical car to run, the four-door Ford Orion, the booted version of the Ford Escort.
several more practical classic cars to come now of course there had to be an mgb in here somewhere we've seen the midget already and this is a v plate a quite a late example mgb roadster with the rubber bumpers but still with the same bmc a b series engine under the bonnet 1800 cc very similar to that that was in the first mgb's great choice of a classic car that is and also in london though we spotted this a hillman avenger this is a rare car now so again with some of these slightly more rare cars make sure everything's there but that's a practical choice four doors again nice light airy cabin drive quite well by all accounts or well, i've never been in one staying with roots and chrysler group we have the hillman imp here this is a 66 car rear engine of course this was roots's answer to the bmc mini and many people believe these are actually a better steer uh, maybe slightly fiddlier to work on with the engine in the back as opposed to in the front but yeah an interesting choice and so is this we saw a saab 95 v4 estate a little bit earlier in this collection and here we've got a matching pair in fact of saab 96s with the v4 engine maybe not quite as practical as the estate but what a great looking car that is so much character talking of character 1950s style we have this the austin cambridge very very nice too this is the pre farina cambridge before pinning farina came along and updated the car very similar running gear of course but pinning farina squared off all the lines and brought in the cambridge for 1959 but this is a slightly earlier car and talking practical though can you get much more practical than this the reliance Simiter gte this is the se6 version with a big Ford V6 in the front, so perhaps not the most economical of cars, but with that fiberglass bodywork, at least it's not going to rust, but just have a good prod at the uh, steel chassis underneath. Now, another wonderful estate car, we have the Vauxhall Victor, the FD, I think this is, the FD series Victor Estate. What a roomy, practical car that is. How fantastic is that? Finding a good one might not be easy nowadays. Uh, most of them are bodged up over the years and parts aren't altogether easy to find but a great car and how about one of these project bobcat as it was called in the 1970s when being developed the mark one ford fiesta here in the sporty xr2 form now we've already seen the wolsey hornet and this is the riley elf the other booted version of BMC's classic Mini. I'm not quite sure what the pecking order was between the Riley Elf and the Wolseley Hornets. Was one more sporty than the other? Was one slightly more opulent than the other? Please let me know in the comments because I've often wondered what the differences were. And we saw a 3 Series BMW earlier on and here we have the 5 Series, the E28 5 Series BMW. And again a real good motorway mile muncher if you have to do longer trips in your modern classic. Uh, but this would be a really practical choice they're all four-door saloons and uh, talking of four-door saloons we have this magnificent rover 100 a p4 series rover 100 various versions were built over the years four and six cylinder cars but they're all pretty practical choices and not too expensive either and there's loads of parts especially second hand available for those cars now a bit of slice of french fancy here this is the citroen c15 van quite a practical choice but quite a lot of my suffering now with tin worm around the sills and so on so i have a good prod around and take a magnet with you and just check for hidden filler but if you can find a good one of these that's actually quite a practical choice and we saw dad's vdp earlier on and here is another version of the ado 16 this is the mg 1100 another great car this was a sporty twin carb version of the austin 1100 the morris 1100 and so on but this is the mg badged version bmc were very keen on badge engineering and another classic saab here the saab four-door saloon version of the 99l and there's an austin stroke rover group montego alongside that and a fiesta hatchback so three potentially quite practical classics there in one photograph which one would you go for and also at Crew Heritage, on another occasion, we spotted this Austin Maxi. Again, like the Land Crab, the Austin 1800, this was an Alec Isigonis design, perhaps better known for the Morris Minor and the Mini, of course. But yeah, very practical car, and again, wheels all four corners, great visibility, and yeah, not too thirsty to run either. And rounding out this collection, we have the estate car, so the practical version of the good old Ford Anglia 105E. 
There we go. So, thank you very much for watching this particular compilation looking at practical classics, cars that really lend themselves to perhaps being daily drivers where they may be roomy, economical, perhaps with a really good spare parts supply, that kind of thing, nice and easy to drive, easy to park and various merits such as that. So please have a look around the rest of the channel while you're here and uh, there'll be many, many more videos along very, very soon. So bye for now.